Hey guys, have you ever done a science experiment in school and had no idea what you just did? So today's lesson we're going to look at the required practical for photosynthesis and I'm going to break it down to its bare bones till you feel confident. I'm Miss Harides and this is the Study Hive. Today's lesson objectives, we're going to look at how light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis and if you're doing higher tier, we're going to explain how these results are affected by the inverse square law. And you can see I've got a couple of keywords there that you want to pay attention to because they're going to come up throughout this lesson. So for all you students who second guess yourself when you do an exam and you think that examiners are out there to get you, take that out of your mind. <laughs> Take that out of your mind. <laughs> Science really tries to break things down into its most simplest form. So I'll give you an example. Here I have the word photosynthesis. Now if I separate those two words, what do they mean? The word photo comes from the word light, photons. Light is made out of photons. And synthesis means to make. So here you can see I've got other words that link to the word photo. Photograph because it needs light to take a picture. Photocopier, again, you need light to scan and duplicate a document. And synthesis, you can see there my little grandmother who's making a jumper for me, she's synthesizing a jumper for me. So what does photosynthesis mean? Sounds really complex, but it just means using light to make glucose. And that's what photosynthesis is. So here you can see my buddy Jan Ingenhaus, he was the founder of photosynthesis and he did this through an experiment you might have noticed in my previous video where he took a bell jar, put a mouse in it, the mouse suffocated in there because there was no oxygen, he then took a mint leaf, added that to the bell jar and the next mouse that was in that bell jar survived and that's when he recognised that photosynthesis was happening and it was the plants were releasing oxygen for the mouse to be able to take it in. So this is the reminder of the equation for photosynthesis. It's carbon dioxide and water, they react together with the presence of light and chlorophyll which is found in the leaves and they make glucose, that's the whole point, but they also make oxygen as a product and that oxygen is going to play a big part into the experiment that we're looking at today. So the required practical, the essential practical that you need to know for your GCSEs is one that looks like this. Now you might remember doing this in one of your lab lessons. So with all science experiments you need to identify three different variables. The independent variable is the one factor in your experiment that you will change. The dependent variable is the factor that you measure and the control variable is all the factors, so there's more than one, all the things that you keep the same in order to have a fair test. So I've drawn a picture here and you might recognise doing this in one of your lessons. You have a stand here with a clamp that's attached to an LED light. You've got a ruler here and that's usually a one metre ruler. You've got a boiling tube over here and you have sodium hydrogen carbonate solution in there. So in this experiment we're going to look at how light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis and we're going to do this by moving the boiling tube at different distances away from the light. So you can see in this experiment that we're using sodium hydrogen carbonate solution and the reason we do this is because the carbonate allows the pondweed to have enough carbon dioxide and how does that fit into the equation? Well you can see here photosynthesis will only happen if carbon dioxide is there so we don't want that to be lacking. Now the LED source um, of light is really good because it allows very little heat to affect the experiment. So if you don't have an LED light and you have a normal light, you'll have to have some form of a shield or a beaker of water to absorb that heat so that doesn't tamper with the experiment. Remember, the independent variable in this case, the thing that we're changing is the distance from the light. What are we going to measure? Well, we're going to actually measure the bubbles that come from the pondweed because they contain oxygen. And you can see here from the experiment, if we link it back to the equation, oxygen is a product of photosynthesis. So it shows that the pondweed is actually photosynthesizing. 
So some things to note with this experiment is that you must cut the pondweed at a diagonal and leave that diagonally cut pondweed at the top and this allows the oxygen bubbles to go uh, be released very easily. The second thing that you want to be aware of is that you should conduct the experiment in a dark room. So when I do it in my classroom I shut all the blinds because the only light we want is the one that comes from the LED source. Thirdly, you're going to leave the boiling tube and the pondweed in front of the light for five minutes before you even start taking results to allow the pondweed to acclimatize to the experiment and to the light. So what's the method of this experiment? Well, you've got the boiling tube with pondweed and at each distance you want to leave it there for one minute and count the number of bubbles that come from the pondweed. You do this three times at least because that's going to help you take the mean. The mean, remember, is a type of average and how you get that is you add the three numbers of your bubbles together and you divide it by the number of times you did it. So in this case it will be the number of bubbles all together divided by three would give you your mean number of bubbles. You would then go to the second distance which at this case is 20 centimeters and you'll do the whole thing again. So one minute and you repeat that three times and then you do that again until you had a sufficient amount of data. You also want to bear in mind that you want to repeat the experiment at equal distances. So in my experiment I've done it every 10 centimeters. So in the exam they might ask you what kind of problems that you can see from this method. Now one thing that is really difficult is to count the bubbles because they can come out really fast. So you can mention that in your exam that through human error you may not count all the bubbles accurately. The second thing is that the different bubbles might have different volume of oxygen which means it's not hugely accurate just to count the bubbles by itself. And thirdly, because you're looking at a living species, you need to ensure that the pondweed is alive in order for it to photosynthesize. So to resolve this problem, we can change the method slightly. Now you can see here, I've got a beaker with the solution and I've got a flask, which I'll just show you over here. That's my conical flask and I've got a measuring cylinder. Everything else I'm keeping the same. And the reason I'm doing this is the flask will direct the oxygen bubbles into the measuring cylinder and I can now actually measure the volume of oxygen rather than counting the bubbles. So that's everything you need to know about this required practical for photosynthesis. Now if you are a higher tier student, you may want to look at the following statement. In your spec point it will say explain how the results of this are affected by the inverse square law. Now that sounds really complicated but it really isn't. All it means is if you look at this graph, when I double my distance, so if I take my laser, when I'm doubling this distance, the rate of photosynthesis is going to decrease by four times. And therefore the number of bubbles or the volume of bubbles on my y-axis is also going to decrease by four times. So if I give you an example, here is 10 centimeters. Um, and when, it, when I double 10 centimeters to 20, this area here is going to decrease by four times and in the same way if I have 20 centimeters and I double it to 40 the number of bubbles again is going to decrease by four times. So what does that mean? The inverse square law means that when you double the distance the rate of photosynthesis also decreases by four times which also means that the number of bubbles or volume of oxygen that is produced will also decrease by four times and that's it. And don't forget one of the things that examiners absolutely dislike is the word amount. So you get no marks for using the word amount because it's so vague. So when you're talking about something, uh, the amount of something, which you don't say, <laughs> I just made that mistake, you want to say volume or you want to say concentration, but you never say amount because we don't really know what that means. It's just too generic. So that's just an examiner's tip for you. So I hope you understand the practical and you feel so much more confident about what it means when you did it in the lesson. So the conclusion you should have found from this experiment is as light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis also increases. Now to summarize the key words, you looked at three different variables. What is the independent, dependent and control variable in this experiment? You also identified the problems that could occur when conducting this experiment and you found solutions to improve the method and get more reliable results. 
And finally, examiners love to use the command word evaluate. Key thing to remember is if you're going to evaluate or critique any experiment, you always have to have the good points and the bad points to show that you're not being biased. And that's it. You've got it. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Cut it out. That's it. So now you should feel thoroughly confident about the required practical for photosynthesis. I really hope you enjoyed that lesson. We have so many other videos on YouTube, so do check out our lessons. If you love what we do and you're really learning, feel free to subscribe, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions and we'll do our best to get back to you. We're also on Instagram, so come and check us out over there and I will see you in our next lesson. Bye guys. Yeah. Yes. Ah, <sighs> love it. Yeah.